What's going on guys? Kyle Grover, Angler's Marine, Lowrance. Wanted to go over a couple basic Lowrance tips that are gonna help you using your active target. Uh, we get a lot of calls at the shop, you know, guys frustrated about the, the view that they're getting and just the picture on the screen overall. And most of the time it's something very simple that's wrong. So the, the first thing that you always wanna look at is the direction of your transducer here. The most important part is that this thing is pointed the right way. Um, Lowrance gives you a couple right here, a couple, uh, they mark it on here so that you can see you want, when you're in forward mode, you know, you wanna have this lined up here, this this dot with this, and then this, this line with this inside one right here. And then you also wanna come around here and look you want to make sure that this you've got three beams coming out of this transducer uh, you want this inside beam the one that's lowest closest to your trolling motor actual shaft you want it parallel with your trolling motor head because if you if you have an active target one you know that doesn't have the markings on it you don't need to go by markings you just always want to make sure that this is flush right here with the head of the trolling motor and then the second thing that you need to pay attention to is that this is level with the trolling motor head. So you can get out your level, set it on the head here, and then set it across this piece up on the top. Make sure that you're level. That, that lets you know that those are both pointed in line the same direction. Um, or you, you can just eye it, but what happens a lot is guys will leave the shot, you know, this time of year, there's weather anywhere across the country. What happens a lot is you put your cover on top of your boat and you just, you have that pressure pushing on that, on the top of this thing. And it'll just slowly, as you drive, drag it down. And then you don't realize when you get out there that this thing's, you know, it's moved five, 10 degrees down the shaft. And now you're, you've gone from a straight view to where it's sideways. And it just really jacks up your picture all the way out there. So those are two things you oh, I always like to check. I'll come here before I launch the boat, make sure this is flush and that this is still pointed the direction that it's supposed to be pointed. How do you move it? How, tell us how, the, how you move it to get so it straight. You, <clears throat> so on these, you've got four screws here that there's a gasket in here. So I have this thing just cranked down where it's real, you, it's real, you can't move it. If guys are installing them themselves or, you know, I try to tell the guys in the back to really crank this thing down because the harder, the harder it's cranked, the less it can, it can shift. But these are, these are just Lowrance knobs. You know, so you just, you loosen these. I got them just cranked right now because I don't want them to come loose. I only run mine in forward mode. That's it. Always forward, always. So I've got them just absolutely cranked down. Can't hardly move them. Um, but you do need to check those on occasion. If you're out on the water and it's bumpy, these can come loose and you'll be driving across the lake and all of a sudden just your transducer will be flopping there. You always want to make sure these are tight right here. But these and then these, once you get it, you've got, you just need an Allen key and you want to crank these down right here to keep it so it doesn't slide on you. So on those knobs, do you want them hand tight or do you use a tool to tighten them? I just, as hard as I can, hand is pretty good. And then just at the end of the day, when I'm done wiping the boat down, I'll check them to make sure we're good to go. All right, good stuff. All right, let's go plan the water. there suspended I saw it suspended <laughs> just up there all by himself that was so cool <laughs> I, was, I was watching the deal I, I didn't have the camera going <laughs> I, I didn't...
I saw him coming too. Oh my god. You see how far he came up from? Dude, that was crazy. That was epic. God. It literally went through. That was like the perfect cast too, man. Uh, he came up from so like right off the bottom. I can't believe I didn't see that one. Good one, teeth, huh? There he is. Lives out here, three pounders. Swallowed. Absolutely swallowed. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Active Tarjay, baby. For Mickey Rig. <laughs> that was so cool. Made the right cast. Yes, finally. sir. Good stuff. There we go. We got him deep, so I let him go. Uh,
All right, so once you've got your, you make sure your transducer pointed the right way. The nice thing about the Lowrance is there's, there's not a whole lot of things that you got to set up. So you want to come down here, menu, and we'll just go from the top, mode and forward, forward range. So this, this depends on what you're doing. If I'm throwing at targets, like sh shorter targets, I'm fishing on the bottom, like a jig or something like that, or a worm. Gen I like to keep it at between 80 and 100, depending on how far the, what you're throwing at or, and how big it is and time of year. It really, we, we saw it today, it de the fish are starting to get, they can feel this thing a little bit. So me, preferably, I try to keep what I'm throwing at between 80 and 110 feet away from me. If you can keep it away from you, it seems like you definitely get more bites. Um, so forward range, 100 feet, down range is another big thing. Never on auto range on your, on your active target. The sonar is totally good for, uh, to automatically adjust, but this right here, you wanna have it, you wanna set it to where I personally, I like to have the bottom half to three quarters of the way down my screen. Uh, I feel like I get a really good picture that way. Uh, and then contrast, this is the biggest thing. So contrast always on automatic. And then you want to go up or down depending on on how bad it is so you don't want like that's too much you can see how it really blows it out right there a good a good spot to start is about eight you, you don't want to you don't want too much noise and if you get your your uh your sensitivity up too high you, you start to lose your bottom your bottom clarity so i like to just depending on how good like right now today I've been running around 11 you see this is a little tiny ball bait ball right here you see it really good and then as I as I pan to the right over here should be a few of them out here like there's a there's a giant one out there at 100 and then you can see when you got this thing rigged right like you can you can see pretty dang clear all the way out to 120 feet which is about as far as I can cast most lures so I, I don't want it to be any further than I can cast, but we got big bait balls all over the place in here. There's some on the bottom, they're up in the water column. So just depending on what you're throwing, but generally like a nice place to start is, is 100 feet. Noise rejection. This is very important on how your boat is rigged. If you're running your active target and it's on your cranking battery, drawing off of that, you want to have your noise your your noise rejection on low. If you've got it on its own standalone battery, which is the way I prefer. So I've got my active target rigged. I have five batteries in my boat. I have a big 100 amp hour battery for mine just on cuz I there's some days where they're super long. Uh, but you can run there's a few different options. Uh, Norsk, the company that I like, they make a small 14 volt battery and it's a lot it's a lot cheaper you know i think they're, we sell them at the shop they're 275 bucks smaller battery you don't have to put it all the way in the back you can put in your rod locker up here it's a lot easier to manage and it'll last all day um, but but preferably you want your active target and your fish finder on their own battery so we, but when you have it rigged on your own battery noise rejection on off that gives you a little more <clears throat> clarity and then Really, the only other, you always want your stable view on. And then your palette is just whatever you like. Some guys like this blue one right here. A lot of guys, this green one up in here. I personally, I've just used it forever. I like number three. But other than that, that's it. So you wanna have it pointed right. You wanna forward range, uh, 80 to 120. Down range, always manually set it yourself, depending on how deep you're fishing. Contrast is somewhere between plus six.